Welcome back for another video of Grant's Heating and Air. Today we're talking about our dual fuel system from Daikin. So what is a dual fuel system? Well, it's when we add a heat pump, which is like an air conditioner that can work in reverse. And the heat pump is outside and it is our primary source of heat in a dual fuel system. And then our traditional gas furnace that everyone's used to seeing is our secondary source of heat here. Let's explain a little bit how this works. So when the heat pump is operating, it's typically going to be above about a 25 degree outdoor temperature. So anything warmer than 25 degrees outside, we're going to use the heat pump to heat the home. And when we get below 25 degrees, we're going to use the gas furnace to heat the home. Unlike an all-electric system, the dual fuel system cannot operate both the heat pump and the gas furnace at the same time they do need to be operated separately. Just to get a little nerdy, it's because the coil here, which is producing the heat in the heat pump mode, is rejecting the heat energy up into the supply ductwork to heat the home, but we can't introduce heat from below the coil and put a bunch of heat into the bottom of the coil, as that would not allow the heat pump to reject the heat and heat the home. So these both the, the heat pump and the gas furnace must operate at separate times, not together. So what we have here is a Daikin 96% efficient furnace, gas furnace. This is an LP setup. Uh, that would be propane gas. And this particular furnace is a two-stage furnace. So we do have a 75% capacity and 100% capacity available at the gas valve. We have wires here that are communicating to the indoor furnace, the blower motor, everything's talking. The coil is even communicating here with this control board and the outdoor unit and the Daikin 1 thermostat. Everything talking together and communicating so that we get proper airflow, proper operations. We have our electronic expansion valve in here that needs to be able to open and close with many different stages. So everything's talking to each other so that we can get the system to work on our Gas furnaces, we always lift them with a box. If you see down here, we actually have a seven and a half inch riser. This might be six and a half, seven, but you get the idea. And what this is, is just an open box that allows us to cut a hole in the side here and allows us to cut a hole in the side of the furnace. This is all sealed. And then that allows this to filter all the air coming back to the furnace. But by us lifting this furnace off the ground, we can get air into the blower on both sides and not just try to push everything through one side of the furnace. So we always use these riser boxes for better airflow, lower the static pressures, which in turn lowers the amp draws on the motor, lowering the operational cost of the equipment by doing this. We've added humidification to the home with this fan powered humidifier. Now, traditionally, we like to install these on the supply duct, but as you can see, we really don't have the space above the furnace to install this. Um, because of the warmer air that travels through the fan on this, we would see a little more humidity, but we still get humidity out of this unit. It's currently, it is heating. I don't know if we can see the gas. You see, that's, that's heating currently. The variable speed blower that's inside this furnace has many different speeds. So based on whether it's in single stage, two stage, or our Daikin fit heat pump, which we'll show you here in a minute, um, has many stages of heating and cooling. So we need that variable speed blower to be able to change speeds, ramp up and down, and match that optimal flow, whether we're trying to use the gas portion to heat or the cooling or even the heat pump outside. What this is for is to make sure that there's airflow running through the system. Okay, so when this is all done heating, that blower is going to come way down to a low circulation speed, which is very quiet, typically around 450 CFM, something like that. Um, so when we get this system to ramp way down, we want to make sure that the humidifier, when calling, does not operate without airflow. So there's a couple different ways we can do this. So in this setup, we actually have this one set up to operate with the included digital humidistat. This is included with the system. With Daikin, though, it's a little bit different on the communicating system. So since we have a non-communicating piece of equipment that we are now working with the communicating piece of equipment, we have two ways we can do this. We could either have this humidifier controlled from the Daikin one, or we can control the humidifier with the included digital humidistat. 
So some advantages to the digital humidistat is that we can put an outdoor sensor and that outdoor sensor will automatically modulate the target of the humidity based on the outdoor temperature. So if it gets really cold outside, this target is gonna start dropping down. And this setup, the customer has a one through 10 setting. It's not gonna say what the target percentage humidity is because we have it set up to automatically modulate. So the customer just kind of finds that sweet point, leaves it, forgets it. But what's important is that we don't run this without a fan blowing because then the humidity is just gonna sit here in this, this return duct, which could condensate and water could actually potentially start to build up in the ductwork and cause issues. So with this setup and not having the Daikin one control this and having this, we actually add that. So if the customer does not turn the circulating fan on at the thermostat and the furnace comes down, it's an idle, everything shuts off, then this will automatically shut off too, even if it's calling for humidity. Something that's really the most problematic thing that we have in HVAC in our industry are humidifiers. Reason being is there's just so much that can actually go wrong with these and water quality is a huge one um, being up here on a well in this particular application we're going to get a lot of hard water or sediment depending on what's in the well and that could actually cause this pad to plug up there's actually a pre-filter that's located where the water line comes in down here that can actually plug up as well um, so regular maintenance is very important and we do take these off during a maintenance clean the inlet filters put new pads in, clean the trays, get all that out of there. But in some applications, we have a lot of problems with these just because there's too many minerals coming in. So what we like to do when we have a lot of minerals is we use steam humidifiers. So today's steam humidifiers actually like the minerals. It, it creates an electrical path inside the canister to actually produce more humidity. Um, so we'll actually do a steam humidifier for it in a location with some really bad water. One of the important things with these humidifiers though is to actually have a freeze and leak detector underneath them. Um, in this case, we do not. I and mean, it's really because it's all concrete here in the drains right here. Um, but I, we do recommend having some sort of water safety underneath um, all humidifiers. And we do that going forward because we've had a few issues. And there's a little door you can pull here. It'll actually allow you to reset the pad when needed. And so every time you reset the pad, you hold that down, the lights will do this little dance and tell you that everything has been reset. So nice that the customer can actually see if there's an issue just by looking at it. And all the other humidifiers don't do that. They don't have lights and indicators. So, okay, so what I like to talk about is the dual fuel option. What are some advantages to a dual fuel option versus an all electric option? Well, in a dual fuel option, you do have that comfort of the traditional gas furnace that most people are used to, which is going to have higher temperatures at the register. That's going to be more comfortable for some customers, especially customers who really want to set back their thermostat at night. So if you like to have your thermostat drop down to 60 and then you want it 70 when you wake up, dual fuel is probably the way to go. Um, just because even if we're above 25 degrees outside, and the customer goes up to the thermostat, bumps the thermostat up, or on a program, the thermostat jumps up, the Daikin one's automatically gonna know, hey, heat pump's gonna take a long time to do this operation, so I'm gonna go ahead and just kick on the gas furnace and get this job done. Now, I would like to say that on a natural gas system here in Colorado, um, it's hard to beat a gas dual fuel system. It's really nice to offset the gas with the heat pump as the heat pump is all electric, especially if you have solar, or you just wanna go green, you just love electricity versus gas, that's great. Um, but here in Colorado, until natural gas prices come up, it's hard to beat, if at all, the operational costs of a dual fuel system. When it's warmer outside, you get more, more heat out of a heat pump. So typically most of these heat pumps, unless they're really cold climate heat pumps, about five degrees outdoor temperature is really where they start to plummet off in the heat output. But we still do around 25, 30 degrees thermal balance changeover with these guys um, just for comfort. Um, we could run that heat pump lower, um, but with the dual fuel, we kind of lean more in that direction. And it really just kind of depends on the cost of the fuel, 
the the rating of the outdoor heat pump and what it's capable of putting out at heat. Another advantage to the dual fuel system would be in a home that doesn't have a lot of power coming into the house. So if you've got a 100 amp service or maybe even a 150 amp service, but you've got a hot tub, you know, you've got all these things that are pulling a lot of power, going to an all electric system may not even be an option for you. So for an example, a 10 kW all electric backup heat kit system is gonna need a 60 amp breaker just for the indoor. And then the outdoor, depending on the tonnage, is typically a 25, 30 amp breaker. But you can see adding a 60 amp and another 30 amp in a home that's only got 100 amps of service, you can start maxing things out, even a 150 amp home with electric water heaters and hot tubs and all that. So another advantage to the dual fuel system is not having that 60 amp or more breaker, depending on the load, and just adding like a traditional air conditioner would be. And they may already have a traditional air conditioner, but now we can use that same circuit to do a heat pump and still kind of offset some of that gas use. And we go into here with a probe, we read those flue gases, and I have the technicians then go in and set the gas pressures in here and make sure that this is burning at the most efficient level possible. Because with altitude changes, we got different amounts of oxygen in the air. And so we're going to have to change that gas valve. And we're going to, you know, just like a carburetor on a car right you could have too much gas or not enough gas kind of the same thing with a furnace so we use that thousand dollar combustion analyzer to set every gas piece of equipment that we do to make sure it's running at optimal efficiency okay so we're outside here on the dual fuel system and i kind of wanted to show you guys this particular heat pump located here you guys can see there is some ice and some icicles that have been falling um, we did mention to the customer that you might want to build a little lean-to over it um, but it, there's absolutely no damage you can see a little screw divot here but everything is just missing it and this system is not on a riser and we made that decision based on that the customer says it really never gets a lot of snow here compared to maybe some snow in some other areas. I don't know, I think in the future we do lift them all up on mini split stands. I think it's just a better idea to do that, but seeing here everything is fine and operating and it is out of the snow and out of the ice. Um, we do add surge protectors to all of it because as some of you may know, mini splits and you know inverter technology does have control boards that are sensitive to electrical spikes and stuff like that. So we've added that. We did talk to the owner about this job and wanted to make sure that, you know, if there were any issues with the sliding snow, because you got to be careful of ice and stuff coming down and smashing into the units. So another nice advantage to these units is just look how, how tight they can fit. And I think Dyken says six inches minimum. So I'd say we're, we're right at that minimum. Absolutely no damage to the unit and it is clear and the homeowner is happy with this particular setup. So yeah, just kind of wanted to show you um, the dual fuel system will look a lot like our all electric systems. You really couldn't tell. Um, other than we do add an electric pan heater to an all electric system because they're running down to negative 10. And of course we would for sure have it up on a mini split stand because of all the water defrosting out of the unit. Well, thanks for coming along with another adventure here and learning about the Daikin dual fuel system with Grant's Heating and Air. We really appreciate you guys watching. And if you have any comments you want to share, maybe other systems that you would like to see, um, we're going to be adding more videos all the time. We've got mini split videos. We've got all kinds of stuff. So like and subscribe. And once again, thanks for watching. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.